1,615 earthquakes. One exceeded a magnitude 6. Unusual movement, global unrest, and more. Kick back folks, and relax. This is your weekend report. Hey folks, I hope you have had an awesome week. I want to thank you for tuning in for the Earthquake Report. For the record, today is August the 21st, 2016. This video will speak of earthquake data spanning from August the 13th through August the 19th. It was on this day in 1985, when a 6.3 struck chime boat, Peru. At least 100 people were injured and 60 homes were destroyed or damaged. This earthquake was felt over an area of 617 miles. This is what's happening, this is a huge news story folks. Your Lord, Obama is returning from his sixth summer vacation and is ready for a busy fall. Lord Barack Obama is returning from vacation rested and ready for a busy fall, including pressing Congress for money to protect against the Zika virus and defending his illegal leverage payment of $400 million to Iran. Obama also is expected to campaign doggedly to help elect Democrat, Hillary, Dung, Beetle, Clinton as president. Obama was due at the White House late Sunday after a 16-day getaway to Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, with his wife, Michelle, and daughters Malia, pot-smoke-loving Obama and Sasha. He began the day by going on a hike with the First Lady. Wow! That is just great! Very rich indeed! American journalism is collapsing before our eyes, claims the New York Post. The frenzy to bury Trump is not limited to the Clinton campaign and the Obama White House. They are working hand in hand with what was considered the cream of the nation's news organizations. The shameful display of naked partisanship by the elite media is unlike anything seen in modern America. The largest broadcast networks CBS. NBC and ABC and major newspapers like the New York Times and Washington Post have jettisoned all pretense of fair play. Their fierce determination to keep Trump out of the Oval Office has no precedent. Indeed, no foreign enemy, no terror group, no native criminal gang, suffers the daily beating that Trump does. The mad mullahs of Iran, who call America the great Satan and vow to wipe Israel off the map, are treated gently by comparison. This is simply sad, but true. Speaking of Donald Trump, it has been reported that he spent the entire classified national security briefing asking about Egyptian mummies. Sitting down with officials from the office of the Director of National Intelligence to discuss a range of foreign and domestic threats facing the United States, presidential candidate Donald Trump reportedly spent the entirety of his first classified national security briefing Wednesday asking about Egyptian mummies. What can you tell me about the dangers posed by mummies, and what are we doing to prevent invoking the ire of King Tut? Trump reportedly asked in response to an update on growing militarism among insurgent factions in Egypt, before requesting a detailed assessment on mummies known strengths and weaknesses and an estimate on the total number of burial chambers in the region. This, my friends, is my kind of president. Way to go, Donald. Finally, Sandigan's report mystery lights in sky. Mysterious lights, possibly a fireball, were seen streaking across the sky in San Diego the evening of August the 15th, according to several individuals. One resident reported spotting the lights between 9.35 p.m. to 9.37 p.m. in the sky over the 3,300 block of El Cajun Boulevard in City Heights. One resident, who spotted the mystery lights above and around the San Diego International Airport and Liberty Station, described the site as a strange aircraft with lights on bottom. 
Sandig and Ruben Quintana spotted the lights from East Lake Monday night and said they appeared to be traveling west and the stream of light began as a single blur then expanded into a straight line before vanishing. If you happen to have witnessed this or a similar event, we would love to hear from you. Post down below, and let us know. You can view these articles and more at our Facebook page. Feel free to zoom over the when you have a moment. You can find the link in the description. Alright. Earthquake report time. Here we go. As mentioned, we finished last week off with 1,615 earthquakes. This, along with today's and yesterday's quakes brings our monthly total to 5,869. For historical reference, a year ago today, we clocked in 347 earthquakes. The strongest to strike the planet then was a 5.2 that struck the Fiji area. This has surely been a wild week. Not only did we experience a rather powerful earthquake, but some have been quite unusual. As previously stated, we registered one earthquake that fell within or exceeded the magnitude 6 category. This being a 7.4 that struck the South Georgia Island region on Friday, August the 19th. The 7.4 magnitude quake shook the southern Atlantic Ocean early Friday, the U.S. Geological Survey said, with an epicenter 195 miles from islands hosting a British Antarctic research station. Fortunately, there was no need for a tsunami warning. The quake struck at 5.32 a.m. local time at a depth of 6.2 miles. It was centered east-southeast of the British-administered South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands. In total, over the course of last week alone, the South Georgia Island region clocked in 11 earthquakes. The average magnitude being a 5.4. Interesting. As previously mentioned, we had 37 magnitude 5 plus earthquakes strike. As you would expect, these earthquakes were centered mostly along the Ring of Fire, with the exception of a 5.2 that struck China on August 13, and a 5.0 that hit Tajikistan on the 14th. Within the Ring of Fire, the most notable being a 5.7 that struck Bowen, Australia on August 18, a 5.9 that hit Russia on August 14, a 5.5 that caused chaos and death in Peru, on August the 15th. Aid was flowing into a mountainous Peruvian region rattled by an earthquake as authorities continued to assess damage on Tuesday. This magnitude 5.4 quake struck the southern Arequipa state late Sunday, causing buildings to collapse in the picturesque Colca Canyon, a popular tourist region. While the quake was moderate in size for Peru, which is accustomed to seismic activity, it caused significant damage to buildings as it occurred only six miles under the surface, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. Rescue workers said that many homes also collapsed due to poor construction. Peru's Civil Defense Institute, or INBASI, said Tuesday that over 1,000 homes were uninhabitable due to damage including 380 that completely collapsed. This is a great time to highly encourage those who are in a position to assist, to consider donating to programs like the Red Cross. There are numerous methods, but my favorite is via texting. To donate, text Red Cross to 90,999 to give $10 to American Red Cross Disaster Relief which helps people affected by disasters such as hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, wildfires and tornadoes. It's an awesome program folks. Anyways, we registered 98 magnitude 4 earthquakes. Seismic swarms were limited to the usual locations like Indonesia, which registered 10, Japan which clocked in 8, New Caledonia which also experienced 8, and Chile with 9, the most notable to strike in this category was a 4.0 that hit Luther, Oklahoma on Wednesday, August the 17th. The remaining earthquakes struck, for the most part, locations here in the states. 
We'll start with Hawaii, which registered 36. All of which were minor with the exception of a 3.4 that struck Captain Cook on Wednesday, the 17th and a 3.0 that hit the volcano on the 13th. Swarm activity was limited to the usual locations. Speaking of Hawaii, about 8 acres of new land has been created over the past 3 weeks according to the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. That adds to the 444 acres of new land remaining from lava flows entering the ocean in the area since 1986. That's pretty amazing. Alaska clocked in 290 earthquakes. The strongest to strike was a 5.6 that hit Semisopachnoi Island on August the 14th. Swarm activity was also limited to the usual locations. Washington registered 44. The most intense being a 2.7 that hit Packwood. The average magnitude for all earthquakes to strike Washington was only a 1.0. Oregon's earthquake activity remained largely unchanged when compared to the previous week's data. We once again experienced 15 quakes. The strongest registered was only a 2.0 that struck Bend on August the 19th. California continues to experience unrest. In total, the sunny state clocked in 805 earthquakes last week. The most powerful experienced was a 3.6 in Ridgemark on Monday the 15th. Additional notable earthquakes registered were a 3.5 that hit Olancha on Thursday and a series of fairly powerful earthquakes that hit the volcano at Mammoth Lakes. In total, this area registered 123 earthquakes. The strongest involved in this swarm include a 2 3.4s, a 3.3, and several 3.0s. Nevada earthquake figures are returning to normal somewhat. The week before last, we clocked in 361 earthquakes in total. Last week, we registered only 144. The strongest experienced was a 2.2 that hit Hawthorne. Idaho registered one all week. The most intense to strike was a 1.4 in Preston. This just so happens to be a location of interest. Preston is a city in Franklin County, Idaho, United States. The population was 5,204 at the 2010 census. Get this. For several years the city of Preston has held a Napoleon Dynamite Festival in the summer. Many of the featured festival themes relate to events that occurred during the film. For example, there is a tetherball tournament, tater tot eating contest, moon boot dance, impersonation, look-alike contest, football throwing contest and more. Guys, that's really awesome. Also, each year Preston holds the Idaho Festival of Lights, which starts the day after Thanksgiving and goes until December 31st. The festival was started by two local businessmen, Wayne Bell and Walter Ross, along with many other community organizations to help celebrate Christmas within the community. This, to me, sounds like one incredible place. Montana experienced only 11. The most intense was a 2.6 in Whitehall. Wyoming clocked in 5. The strongest registered was a 1.5 that hit Old Faithful Giza. Utah registered 19. The strongest reported was only a 1.9 in Pangich. Oklahoma clocked in 21. The strongest experienced being the previously mentioned 4.0 in Luther. Along with this earthquake, we registered a noteworthy 3.6 in Fairview, a 3.2 in Perry, and 3.1 in Tungkawa and Medford. Kansas experienced two. The strongest being a 3.5 in Cheney and 1.8 in Conway Springs. The new Madrid seismic fault experienced movement as well. This includes one earthquake that struck steel, Missouri. This being a 1.7 that occurred on Tuesday the 16th. Not to be left out, Tennessee clocked in a 1.6 in Tiptonville and a 1.6 in Wrigley. 
The North American Kraton also experienced movement. This being a 1.5 that struck Weir, New Hampshire on the 18th. Our Canadian neighbors experienced seismic movement as well. Nine earthquakes in total. The most notable being a 3.4 in Princeton. Last, but not least, we experienced a rather unusual magnitude 2.5 earthquake in Snyder, Texas on Saturday the 13th. Snyder is not an area prone to earthquakes, but in the last three years there have been more than 15. The presumption is that they are related to either the extraction of oil or pumping fluid into wells for secondary oil recovery. Very interesting indeed. And that's it for the earthquake report. If you experienced an earthquake today, or if you would simply like to chat, please post down below. I would like to hear from you. Seriously? Post about anything that is on your mind. Make certain to like, subscribe, and share this video please. Also, if you like the social media thing, you can link to us via the standard allotted social sites in the description. We'll end this report a video from our favorite star.